Welcome back to Mock the Mock, where we take a look at someone else's mock draft. And I'm Mock, and giving you my views, thoughts, and opinions. And today, well, shoot, the, ja the draft gurus themselves, the draft gods, Mel Kuyper and Todd McShay, they throw down a three-round mock draft best. Your sweet cheeks, we gonna mock the mock it. But what's crack lacking It's your boy, Barosh Mo, just in case you did not know so. Go ahead, become a bro and subscribe. Leave this video a thumbs up if you enjoy the content or if you at least want to support the channel. It really helps out with that YouTube algorithm that I try so hard to figure out. But still, it eludes me. But uh, yeah, also let me know what you think in the comment section below. I got Gojo chilling here. Actually, let's go to, let's go to this screen real quick. I got Gojo chilling, waiting for the Chiefs picks. Got Aquila right over here just hanging out. She doesn't care. But let's go ahead, get into the nitty gritty of things. Um, and I'm kind of curious who's going to be taken the first. They're alternating. Who goes first? Mel Kuyper, blah, blah, blah. No deals. That's even a hint at I won't take player X if you don't take player Y. No cheating. No trades allowed. Okay, la di da la -ti da So Todd McShay taking the first pick, taking kind of the softball. A lot of us think that Aiden Hutchinson's going to be the pick here. Um, hold on. I, I wanna, I'm curious. Is this opinionated? Like, is this what they would do? Using their personal rankings to guide them. Okay. Okay. So this is their picks. Oh, by the way, spoiler alert. Let's take a look at Mel Kuyper's pick for Detroit. Okay. So... Jaguars, that's a gimme. Aiden Hutchinson currently. He's the odds on favorite to go at this pick. We've seen Trevon Walker kind of get toyed with with the Jaguars a little bit. But Aiden Hutchinson, Aiden Hutchinson seems like the no-brainer. Uh, on top of that, you can make a case. Maybe they do a trade uh, with Cam Robinson the day of the draft. I don't think that's likely. It sounds like they're going to let Robinson and Walker Little fight it out at o at the o uh, left tackle. And then they're going to stick with Juwan, um, Juwan Taylor at right tackle. So, and Hutch, it makes sense. Best player on the on the board. Excuse me. Um, now, Mel says, I don't have Trevon Walker ranked this high. He's top 10. He's number 10 on my big board. But he's going to, he's going to go in the top five picks because of his ceiling, which is true. Which is true. I, he's going to be going in the top 10. Every one of their moms saying it. If the Lions can't get Hutch... They're going to get an instant edge rush help with Walker. Okay. I would go KT personally if we're rolling the dice. You can't deny Walker's upside, though, seems very immense. Dude, we're not doing the Chiefs yet. What are you doing coming out? I think you got something on your eye, too. Come on, bro. Gojo over here just doing Gojo things. Let's take a look at what Todd does for the Texans. He goes KT. Can't dispute it. I prefer to go Evan Neal. I know some of y'all have problems with that because, oh, man, they got Titus Howard. Listen, I don't believe in Titus Howard. Straight up. Move him to guard. I know he played kind of all right at left tackle last year, but at right tackle, he's kind of been just benign. It's It's been whatever. You can upgrade with a player here in Evan Neal, and I would, and I'd move, I, I would move Howard to where they moved him last year, left guard. That's what I would do. But they go with KT. I'm not going to dispute that. I got, I think KT is, I got KT literally right behind Evan Neal. So if that's the way they want to go, then go for it. All right. At four, the Jets are taking Sauce Gardner. This is Kuiper's pick. Uh, with the top three edges gone, I think the Jets will go with the best defender available. Gardner can be a shutdown corner. Can't deny that. Uh, not doing trades. I think you could dabble with receiver here. I think really you can with the fear that, oh, the Giants might take one. Oh, the, the Falcons might take one. Uh, if DK Metcalf gets moved, the Seahawks might take one. So you got teams that could be in play at that pick. Uh, Gojo taking his leave. He knows Chiefs ain't coming up for a long time. So I think you could do that. Obviously, hey, if going with another perimeter player here in Sauce, I think that's fine. Get more talented at the cornerback position. That's never the wrong answer. 
you can also make a case for an OT here because Becton, he's been talked about as a trade candidate. He's been talked about as maybe a guy that uh, the coaching staff necessarily isn't that high on. And also fans got, got one more year on his contract. So, yeah. Uh, I imagine Todd goes with OT. Kind of a gimme. They get a Kemba Guanu. Get Daniel Jones some help. At six, here, this, let's see what Mel does. Mel does, Malik Willis takes the top quarterback off the board. Unless the Panthers trade down here, they won't have any picks on the second day of the draft. True. I think their next pick is like, what, 118, 130, something like that. Uh, this is their chance to get a quarterback. Willis is more talented than Kenny Pickett. Darn skippy. <laughs> so, yeah, no fault there. Uh... Carolina, they're kind of the mystery of the draft. They're going to kind of control. I, I, I want to say control how things may go down this class because they could take quarterback. They could trade. And literally, where the quarterbacks go in this class, it's every year. Where the quarterbacks go kind of dictates how the draft goes. And right now, this is the Panthers are the hot spot for taking a quarterback. They all also have been very eager with uh, Jimmy G or Baker. So maybe maybe they make a move on one of those guys. I don't know. We'll see. But if they have to stick here with this pick, it's hard not to say go Malik Willis because you know you, you don't have it. And Darnold, you could obviously just try to build the offensive line, go with uh, Cross, or maybe take the best player available. It's It's kind of a weird position for the Panthers. McShay at pick seven for the Giants goes Jermaine Johnson. I actually did this last night. Take the next best edge rusher off the board. He's actually edge three. Haven't checked out my edge rankings. Take a look at them. They're on the channel. I go over my top 15. So Jermaine Johnson has been talked about as a top 10 guy in this class. I think he goes in the top 10 as well. If he does sneak out of the top 10, uh, I think his floor is probably 14 to the Ra uh, Ravens. But uh, yeah, no, they get they need edge help, so they get edge help. Atlanta Falcons, Garrett Wilson. See, this is the exact thing I was talking about. It, like Garrett Wilson coming off the board before that pick ten, so maybe going vice versa, taking the wide receiver at four, like trying to big brain it. I don't know. It's kind of hard. Drafting's difficult. Atlanta Falcons. They're taking Garrett Wilson. Uh, their receiving core is dog water. Seattle Seahawks is this cross I might be taking cross here if this is me picking off my board oh Evan Neal I didn't know Evan Neal didn't even go wow no yeah it would have been Evan Neal in a heartbeat holy crap dude he falls holy crap that's wild uh no that's a great pick uh Dwayne Brown's a free agent currently and so is Brandon Shell. take Evan Neal he's the best player on the board yeah no <laughs> yeah not <laughs> like Ah, I talked about him so much at four. I forgot he didn't even come off the draft board. All right, Jets are going Drake London. I know Mel Kuyper really loves Drake London. I like him too. You'll find out where he is in my receiver rankings. Uh, he's, he's one of the, the big five receivers everyone talks about in this class, along with uh, Williams, Olave, and Burks. So uh, they snag him here. I personally might go with the guy Mel mentions here. Jameson Williams could be an option. I really like Jameson Williams. So, eh. yeah, we'll see. All right. Todd McShay, Washington Commanders, take Kyle Hamilton. This could be a very popular trade down spot. Also, they could just take the best guy on the board. Hamilton's pretty darn good. Chris Olave is a guy that does come to mind. Uh, Hamilton, you, I think you, he's very versatile. He's a guy you're going to, you're going to have to like keep in mind that versatility and you could do a lot of cool things with them. You just got to be willing to do that. Will the, can Washington do that? I don't know. We'll see. All right. So we're on to Mel pick and Derek Steenley for the Vikings. For me, that's a no brainer. Derek Stanley is would be a phenomenal pickup if you're Minnesota and you have the type of cornerback room Minnesota has, which if you don't know what that means, that means they got a bad cornerback room. A lot of people say, oh, they could go wide receiver. Either or, you're going with 
outside of quarterback, I think the perimeter is the biggest the biggest thing you want to address in the NFL, whether it's corner, whether it's wide receiver. All right, Houston Texans. Todd McShay goes Charles Cross. Hey, look. Look at that. So if Davis Mills is going to have success, Houston has to get some protection for him or a receiver. That's why, I, me personally, I go Evan Neal and then I go receiver for the Texans. That way you get the best Davis Mills evaluation. I'm not going to argue they got KT, they got Cross. That's pretty darn solid to me. They're like their top think they're in the top seven on my top yeah they're in my top seven or top nine can't remember how my big board goes but no it's still good value good pick baltimore ravens are going trent mcduffie interest in here they have options here yes they do uh kuiper is like they could go with an offensive tackle or a defensive lineman mcduffie gives them versatility and depth at the position that was injury hit last season so he does give them First say I do agree with that. You might be concerned. Can they play a lot of press with that? I mean, I, I think that's neither here or there. His versatility. I'd be, I be. I don't mind this pick. I know Trent McDuffie's a, a name whether you love him or hate him. You're one of two ways. You're one of two extremes. There's really no middle ground when it comes to people and how they feel about Trent McDuffie. Philadelphia Eagles go with Jameson Williams. They get a burner because they... Don't like Jalen Rager, and I don't blame him. So they get them there. Let's try to guess what the, uh, what the Saints do with this next pick. Um, Chris Olave, Trevor Pennant. I think those are the two options. Because you got to imagine, ideally, they get offensive tackle and receiver in this, in this draft. They think they're ready to win now, so I think that's it. Trevor Pennant, okay. So I think mainly they trade up to the 16 pick to get in front of the Chargers because they assume the Chargers will take an offensive tackle, being Trevor Pennant. So they they swap picks with the Eagles because they're able to get up ahead of the Chargers. Who like if that if Cross doesn't make it there, that next tier of tackles that they kind of get. Uh, they're among the first teams that gets first billing. You could say, oh, maybe Penning goes to the Ravens. I think with Morgan Moses there, that's very unlikely. Then again, Ronnie Stanley, he's often hurt the last couple of years. So I get I get, I get it. Trevor Pennant. All right. Uh, 17. Who is 17? Oh, I was just talking about the Chargers. They go Jordan Davis. Another kind of no-brainer. Their run defense wasn't that good last year. And Davis kind of solves that. Test out like a unicorn. This is a very popular spot for Jordan Davis. Philadelphia Eagles. Are we going to see a linebacker? No, we're seeing Daxton Hill, man. Mel Kuyper. Yeah, Mel Kuyper has Hill on his um, in his top 20 now on his big board. He says, I'm a huge fan of Hill who played mostly slot corner last year for the Wolverines. Big waste. Should have been playing deep. Um, then again, they, they play him closer to the line because the Big Ten's kind of a run heavy conference, so it makes sense. You want your playmaker, like it's you kind of be doing nothing back there playing deep. So I understand that they wanted probably their best players around the line of scrimmage. So, huh. uh, he could stuff the stat sheet for the Eagles, make it tackles at the line of scrimmage. I think you're playing him deep, though. Getting his hands on passes as a center fielder. That's where I want to play him, Mel. That's where. All right, this is the Saints' next pick. Olave. Chris Olave. Todd McShay goes with Chris Olave. This is an ideal scenario. Obviously, it'd be more ideal if Car Cross made it to that pick, but that's fairly i think unlikely so going trevor pennant and then getting chris olave is legitimately for the saints best case scenario all right steelers is this quarterback this is mel kuyper picking man is this quarterback he goes with kenny pickett yeah he does uh i won't do this kenny pickett's fairly lower on my board i think he's at 53 uh you can go check quarterback rankings that's out look at me just plugging my videos but uh i don't know if i'm if we got Tri M mitch trubisky why not go with a quarterback with higher upside desmond ritter sam howell matt matt corral i'd be willing to go with any of those guys over Pickett. so 
Yeah. All right, 21, Patriots. This is a very popular trade down spot. Do they trade down? Well, I mean, they don't, they're do not they not doing trades in this mock, so probably not. Uh, Nakobe Dean, if you read my other mock drafts this spring, you know I love this fit. Dean has some unbelievable tape. Yes, he does. Uh, and Coach Bill Belichick would get him involved on defense in numerous ways. Okay, I'm cool with that. I like Devin Lloyd just because Dante Hightower, I don't think, is returned to the Patriots. So he would, I think, ideally, you're getting... You're getting a guy with similar a similar build, similar length to Dante Hightower, but I do I do like Nicobe Dean, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna front. Uh, 22 is the Packers' first pick. They go Christian Watson. This is Mel Kiper's pick. This one's tricky because there's a chance the top four receivers will be off the board. Oh uh, well, top five. I mean, I guess maybe they're not high on Burks. Well, maybe Mel's not high on Burks. And if they want their gay, they may need to package 22 and 28 to move up. I don't think that'll be the case. I think they're going to hold on to those picks. I mean, listen, Watson's just MVS better ball skills. That That's what I've kind of come down to when it comes to the Packer or comes to Watson. I don't really love this pick. I don't think I... I, I don't think I'd take Christian Watson in the first round. If he sneaks in the first round, might not. it's not going to surprise me much. But 22 feels a bit rich. 23, the Cardinals. Is this a receiver? No, it's Traylon Burks. Okay, so they get the uh, upgrade. Well, not upgrade. Well, okay. They Oh, they did re-sign A.J. Green? I didn't know that. Um, even so, Traylon Burks is essentially would be an upgrade per se because A.J. Green, again, he's no longer in the prime of his career. So they, they begin a guy with a similar... I would say skill set to an AJ Green be that big bodied vertical threat. But but yeah, huh. I don't know. I don't know, man. All right, we got Kuiper picking for the Cowboys booth. Arnold Ebiketti, hell yeah, get some love. No lie, straight up, I'm considering moving Ebiketti ahead of Boye Mafe. Like, I'm struggling with this right now. I'm really struggling with this. Uh, not ahead of George Karloftis, though, but I love this team's prospect, uh, this team prospect pairing, especially if this many receivers have already been taken. Epiketti can join Micah Parsons. Okay. Oh, okay, I see. Another former Nittany Lion in Dallas, and he'll allow Parsons to stay at off ball. Well, I mean, Parsons, uh, part of the lore is, man, him coming off the edge. I don't want him to stay off ball too long, but yeah, I don't mind that. Uh, let's see what the Bills is. This is Andrew Booth. Everyone, their mom. If this isn't a lazy pick, if he's available here, you're, you're taking him. They lost Levi Wallace. Booth is a very good scheme fit, and it's competition for Dane Jackson there at the cornerback two spot. All right, 26, Tennessee tight ends. Zion Johnson, hey, Derrick Henry, engine to the offense. Best believe you should go out and get somebody to help that engine because what dictates running back production? Down and distance, scheme, and offensive line. And they lost Roger Saffold. Grabbing Zion Johnson would be an immense help. And basically, that paves the way for what? Taylor Lewan, Zion Johnson, Ben Brown, Nate Davis. And then in, I think they're going to, they're, they're having Raiden, uh, Dylan Riddens play right tackle. All right, let's keep moving. 27, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Devontae Wyatt makes sense. Makes sense. Sue, no longer the player he used to be. Uh, you can always upgrade over William Golston. So grabbing Devontae Wyatt, I think, makes a ton of sense. Good value. For a team that's, hey, they're trying to win now. That's that's their window now. <laughs> All right, Green Bay Packers go with George Karloftis. He just kind of falls to them here. That's pretty good. I mean, uh, Karloftis might be the hardest guy to project where he goes in this class. You either, you either really like him or you really don't. I think he's 15 on my big board. 
So this is great value here. So now we got both the Chiefs picks. Let's see what happens here. First pick, Jahan Dotson. So they get a very savvy route runner, a uh, very explosive route runner. I personally, if I'm the Chiefs, I'm trying to address defense, but it is what it is. I assume this next pick is defense. It's David Ajabo, so it's not it's defense not for the season. The Chiefs can afford to wait on him, I guess. I mean, I think David Ajabo slips out. So this McShay's pick was a receiver. Kuiper's pick was a Jabo. Very interesting indeed. Um, I'm not in love with with the Chiefs picks. Don't tell Gojo. Don't tell Gojo. Poor, poor Gojo's out there getting food and water. He doesn't know what's happening here. All right, let's take a look at 31. Devin Lloyd. Wow, they're going to have Tyler Linderbaum fall out the first round. Okay. Uh, I originally thought hard about Tyler Linderbaum here, but Lloyd slide out of the top 30 forced my hand. Okay. So he's, he's just higher on Lloyd than Linderbaum. That's kind of the case. Hey, take whoever's up, up there on your board. You do you, boo. Uh, yeah, no, I don't think Jermaine, Jermaine Pratt's the, um, the guy there long-term in the middle. I think when his contract's up, which I think he is at the this is the last year's contract if not this year the next year so yeah Devin Lloyd very versatile too and what he can do as a pass rusher all right Detroit Lions their next pick is Desmond Ritter Mel Kuyper straight up straight up guys if you don't like quarterback the idea of quarterback for the Detroit Lions at pick 32 it's just good value you get a fifth year quarterback value hardly it just doesn't diminish like it does for other positions. So you could trade that sucker away and still get decent value. It's just good. So Desmond Ritter. So we saw Ritter. We saw Pickett. We saw Willis. So let's open up the second round now. All right. Mel Ka or, uh, Todd McShay goes Tyler Linderbaum. Brandon Linder retired. Kind of obvious. Uh, Detroit Lions with their next pick are going Lewis Seen. So they brought in, I mean, I guess Deshaun Elliott necessarily necessarily isn't the end all be all. Maybe they go like the scene maybe as a guy that can maybe usurp him sometime this year. He was hurt last year, Elliott. Um I might be dipping my toe into the receivers though, if I'm if I'm the Lions at 34. All right, New York Jets go Boye Mafe. So in the first round, they grabbed what? Who did they grab? First two picks, pass on edge, which means it was Sauce and it was Drake London. Okay, so they get Boye Mafe here. Very explosive. Uh, Jalen Pitry going to the Giants. This one's interesting. So straight up, man, like uh, what? They grabbed Jermaine Johnson. Pitry is going to play slot. Does that force Darnay Holmes to the outside and Aaron Robinson? Those guys they think can consistently play on the outside. Like I like Pitry a lot as a prospect. Interesting move, though. Uh oh, here, let me do this. There we go. Houston Texans, Brees Hall. Come on, man. Come on, man. Brees Hall, listen, he's going to go. Like, I think he's going to go before pick 40. I think the NFL is not in love with him. I think it's going to be a team training up. I don't think the Texans, you don't need him. Grab a receiver, grab perimeter players. Oh, hey, Gojo. Now, I'm not going to tell you, Gojo, what happened to the Chiefs. I'm not gonna tell you, man. It's for your own good. Uh, I don't like it. Y'all know how. If you're not new to the channel, you know how I feel about running backs. So I I don't love the pick. And, oh, there goes Kenneth Walker. I get it for the Jets pairing him up with uh, Michael Carter, but they also did address the perimeter with Sauce and Drake London. So it's like. You could kind of make that pick when you have four picks inside the top 38. You could kind of make that pick. All right, so there goes the run top running backs back-to-back. -back. Uh, Chicago Bears, their first pick. 
Kenyon Green. They did lose James Daniels. Or is it Daniel James? I always forget. Forget which way it goes. I think it's James Daniels. Uh, so I guess this means Green is playing one of the guard spots. They brought in Lucas Patrick, probably to play center. So Cody Whitehair is probably going to stick at guard. And I guess in this case, you, you're you going to keep Larry Borum at right tackle. I guess ideally. All right. So this is the next two picks for the Seahawks. They go Matt Corral. I don't mind it. Take a shot. And then Quay Walker. Ugh. So I don't mind taking quarterback at this spot. I, I kind of talked about it in the live stream last night that, hey, why not? You know, if quarterbacks fall, go ahead, take the top quarterback on, on your board, especially if he is the top player on your board. Uh, Quay Walker, like you're pairing him up with Jordan Brooks, but I don't know. If I'm the Seahawks, I'm tr I am may be trying to address positions of need like Kyer Elam's there. Uh, maybe Tyler Smith. I know they went Evan Neal, but Tyler Smith could probably play right tackle. If not immediately, man, you could just plug him in at one of the guard spots. Uh, Damian Lewis has had a bit of a down year. Maybe he recovers. Uh, and who do they have? Gabe Jackson. So it's like, you could upgrade from that. Like Gabe Jackson is the player he used to be. Um... Kyer Elam, though, I think is the one that stands out. I think I might go Kyer Elam. Uh, what did they did, Evan Neal? So maybe you go with Edge, one of the Edge guys. A lot of them are off the board now, though. Like, you'd kind of be forced, like, kind of not reaching terribly, but going after Drake Jackson might be an option. So I just, I think I'd rather do something more valuable with my picks. Uh, Tyler Smith actually going to the Colts, so... Fun fact, they did lose Glasgow, so maybe you move Smith to guard right off the bat, and maybe he's your eventual ta left tackle of the future, potentially. Uh, regardless, man, dude's dude's got a huge upside. Oh, maybe I make that the thumbnail. I think I'm I think I will. All right, Atlanta Falcons go Kyler Gordon. They get uh, – because Casey Hayward's not the long-term answer. Even though he's on a two-year deal, he's not the long-term answer. So, yeah, Gordon, man, he's got some upside. Tested out nice. And Travis Jones, pencil it in. Browns, this is just – if he's available here, take him. Take him in a heartbeat. I'm not even – there ain't much to talk about here. Uh, Baltimore Ravens. They go the K the beef Jergens. I mean, yeah. I don't think their center of the future is currently on the roster. That's fun. I don't know. Like this is high for I guess for Jergens though, isn't it? I'm trying to think where I have Jergens. I think he's like the sixties or seventies on my big board. It feels a bit a bit high, but. It's, it's fun. All right. Uh, Gojo's chewing on a bone right now. Uh, Trey McBride. What the flip? Uh, McBride is the first tight end off the board in a so-so class. I think the class has got a lot of day three depth. Um, Irv Smith returned from injury. Tyler Coughlin now with the Jets. I guess, but that's not. that's just not sexy. I feel like the Vikings got bigger, bigger fish to fry, bigger issues. All right, Washington Commanders, they're going Sky Moore. This is pretty nice. Sky Moore falls them here at this pick. Uh, George Pickens is still on the board, too. But Sky Moore, man, he might be better Curtis Samuel if I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> but um, I think you could probably play more on the outside. He handled press pretty well. So, I don't mind them grabbing talent at a receiver. Uh, Chicago Bears go Kyer Elam. Finally off the board. Pairing him up with Jalen uh, Johnson. I like that a lot. I'd be willing to take him a lot higher. It's kind of interesting. I guess he's kind of underrated now. The Sounds like the consensus is he's not a first rounder. The Jets 
or not Jets, the Saints. They're the next pick. I can't see who they're picking next. The receivers on the board, George Pickens. Though they got Olave. Do you maybe swing on a quarterback here? They do. Sam Howell, my QB too. Check out my quarterback rankings. Uh, yeah, no, I like this. If they could, hey, if they come out with Olave, Pennant, Howell, that's a win for me, man. I like it. Ooh, nope. Here's the thumbnail, boys and girls. Here's the thumbnail. I guess I gotta speed this up, cause uh, we we got we're not even halfway through. All right, Kansas City Chiefs. Hey, Gojo, you're taking Roger McCreary. He's going to be playing your slot. You want to know what you, uh, you... You took David Ajabo, and then you took um, Jahan Dotson in the first round. Oh, he don't look impressed. Gojo don't look impressed. But they grab Roger McCreary. He could play... Uh, he's probably playing slot early on. He can play on the outside, though. Uh, Christian Harris, Eagles. They take a linebacker here. That's pretty nice. Has Honey Badger signed yet? Nah, dude. He's still taking his freaking time. Hey, man. I guess, man. You go you go find where you can win, my friend. But uh, Christian Harris is interesting. Uh, Y'all know I'm high on Leo Chanel. Uh, Christian Harris, he's got size. He's got the athletic ability. And honestly, he's coming to a place where uh, he can, he's going to have to play a lot of zone. So his zone eye has got to get a bit better. Pittsburgh Steelers take John Mechie. Okay. I mean, the Steelers do like their day two uh, wide receivers. And they did lose Juju and James Washington. So it's not out of the realm of possibility. Green Bay Packers take Logan Hall. Y'all know how I feel about Logan Hall. I don't... Like, this is about the range. I think you start thinking about Logan Hall. I don't think he's a first-rounder. So, yeah, he kind of would be the... Uh, what was it? Was it Kyle... Fackrell? Fackrell? Can't remember how, how, how you say his name. But he, he that's kind of the... Uh, that would essentially be the role he plays there. New England Patriots take Dylan Parham. Interesting. So they're going to have him stay at guard, but I think he could play center in the NFL as well. He was taking snaps at center at the Senior Bowl, but I do like playing him at guard. This cat, man, I like it. I like his athletic upside. I also like that uh, he put on the weight. All right, Nick Benito going to the Cardinals. He would be more so that Hassan Haskins role. And I I heard an interesting thought that they might move um, Smith or Simmons to the Hassan Haskins role and have them kind of like be an edge right rusher primarily that can drop back into coverage. So maybe I'm not looking at a Nick Benito, maybe a Drake Jackson. Not necessarily Nick Benito, who, again, a guy that can play coverage has done for Oklahoma, and he has limitations in terms of what he brings to the table as far as a uh, he, he, you're, he, his play strength is questionable. You're never going to see him pull out a bull rush. So it's not really a Chandler Jones replacement. It's not the role he's going to be playing. Dallas Cowboys go Abraham Lucas. I kind of like that. I don't believe in Terrence Steele, even if the Cowboys do. Uh, and if anything steals your left tackle, I think it, Lucas can play either spot too, either or. But he, he can start right away. Like I like this. This is a good value. I got Lucas in my top 50. Who'd they go in the first round? Epichetti, that's right. Buffalo Bills go George Pickens. Oh, my gosh. Give... It's literally, literally, Josh Allen. I want all the weapons. I sees ya, I likes ya, I wants ya, and I'm gonna have ya. Give him all the weapons, dude. I like that. Cause uh, Stephon Diggs is a guy that can play 
on the outside or in the slot. Same with Dylan Gabriel. They also brought in Jameson, Wood, uh, Jameson Crowder. So I don't mind this one bit. Um, I think Pickens goes higher than this, though, personally. All right, Atlanta Falcons. Drake Jackson, good fit. I like it. Get a guy that can get after the quarterback because you have no one. Green Bay Packers, Greg Daltage, everyone and their mom is mocking a tight end to this 59th pick. It is what it is. It's just what everyone's doing. Uh, he does have better receiving upside than Robert Tunyon and Mercedes Lewis. So, At 60, we have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers going with Cole Strange. So trying to maybe find a potential replacement at the left guard spot for Ali Marpet. So not bad, not bad. Cole Strange is another guy getting a lot of day two love now. Uh, San Francisco 49ers, Nick Cross. I'm telling y'all, man, I love Nick freaking Cross to the Niners. He is such a great pick to the Niners. Show Nick Cross the freaking respect he deserves. That dude's a freaking monster. By the way, safety rankings just dropped earlier today. All right, Kansas City Chiefs, Alec Pierce. So they get Dotson and they get Pierce. I don't like this strategy for the Kansas City Chiefs. I'm just going to flat out say it. I don't like it. Um, they they got vertical guys in, though I think Pierce is probably the better contested catch guy between a Mikkel Harman and an MVS. But those are their vertical guys. I don't like it. I'm just straight up, I don't like it. All right, keep moving on. Cincinnati Bengals, Fedarian Mathis. We know that they love their interior presence. Uh, Larry Ogajobi, I think he was third. I think he he was technically their third defense, their third interior D, DT, and he had over like six hundred snaps. So yeah, that third that third interior player is going to see a lot of playing time. So. Mathis, the guy that's ready to start now, feels a bit high for him, though. Maybe I'm just low on him. Uh, Cam Taylor Britt, good fit. I kind of like this. Um, did they bring back Kyle Fuller? No, he's currently a free agent still. Interesting. Ronald Darby, uh, off the top of my head, I don't know how much experience he has in the slot. Because, I mean, this moves Ronald Darby to the slot. Unless they want, don't want to, they want to take their time with Cam Taylor Britt. But I don't mind this. Safety is, or uh, corner. So, oh, they list him as a safety? I mean, the dude does come, come downhill and lay a mean hit. But I don't know how much experience... Brit has actually ducking and weaving like the offensive, like navigating the offensive line. Like, I don't know about that. I mean, I guess you're going to ask Justin Smith to do more of that. I don't know, man. This is kind of weird. I don't know. All right. Day, finally, round three. Wandale Robinson. They get a twitchy little weapon. Uh, really gadget player. My top gadget player goes to uh, Calvin Austin. Just tested out better than Robinson. Though Robinson did his production in the SEC. But we have seen cases against better defenses where Robinson got shut down. Georgia, for instance. Um, I feel better about Ro Robinson at the back end of day two, early day three. Detroit Lions, Shannon Tindall. I feel like that's very similar to what they have in... Was it? Is it Derek Butler? No, Derek Barnes. I feel like that's very similar to what they have in Derek Barnes. I'd be looking more for that uh, guy that can be that guy that could like be a nasty run stuffer in the middle. Maybe Leo Chanel. Man, maybe maybe I'm the only guy high on Leo Chanel. That's not true, but Chad Muma going to the Giants kind of makes a lot of sense considering Blake Martinez coming off a torn ACL and uh, everyone behind him is just kind of dog water. All right, Houston Texans, Jaquan Brisker. Wow, Brisker falls, falls to the third. That's not half bad. 
it's good value. Uh, I actually don't like uh, where the direction they're going, going in with safety. <laughs> if you're Houston, uh, I don't think like with Eric Murray and Terrence Brooks, um, it looks like they're moving Lonnie Johnson back to corner, which he played well at safety. I don't know what you're doing, but Brisker's good value here. All right, Bernard Ryman also falling all the way to the freaking third round. That's wild. That's just a good pickup. That's just a good pickup. Uh, Jaguars go Calvin Austin. Wait, didn't they just go Wandale? This is McShay. No, this is Kuiper. I'm going to double up on short slot wide receivers for the Jags because I'm not sure. I hate the I hate this pick. Pick one. These are two gadget players. Why are you picking What what is it? what is it in Jacksonville? I want all the gadget players. Matter of fact, Travis Etienne's gonna get a little bit into that too. Like what the hell? What is this? I hate this pick. <laughs> pick one and be done with it. Chicago Bears. Josh Pascal. They haven't came out with a receiver in this draft, by the way, I think. Uh, cause they went, they, who did they pair up with? They paired somebody up with Jalen Johnson and they also went Kenyon green. I can't remember the, the corner was it, it wasn't, it wasn't Gordon. It was, it was Elam. Okay. There we go. Uh, Josh Pascal, pretty good. Pascal's pretty good, man. I, don't think he's scheme dependent. He could do a lot of whatever you want him to. Uh, let's see. Seahawks take Amari Barno. I mean, uh, Barno. I don't. Know. I'm not taking. Uh, I'm not taking this guy till early day three. Undersized pass rusher flies off the edge, but still, at the end of the day, undersized. He's kind of a one. Tr like he has a lot of pass rush moves, just none of them are power moves. So it's like. If I'm Seattle, that's not what I'm shooting for. Not not with pick 72. The Colts are taking Jalen Tolbert. That's actually a good pick. That's a good pick. Give Matt Ryan some weapons. So Colts knocking it out of the park. On to the Falcons. Troy Anderson. Yeah, your team's not going to be winning next year. So take a guy you can develop. Uh, Leo Chanel finally coming off the board. Listen, this guy is in my top 30. And he's coming off the board here at 75. Like, what the heck? Best player on the board? Yeah, he is. That's a hell of a steal if you're the Broncos. I mean, Chanel is just a guy that's not going to get... It's just not going to get drafted in the first round. Even though I would. Baltimore Ravens take Perry on Winfrey. So they get a um, that penetrator on the D-line. So I don't mind that. Uh, the Vikings go to Marvin Leal. So he, again, this is a guy that's probably going to be playing a similar role to Winfrey. Um, just Leal doesn't have the weight, uh, nor do I think he needs it. Um, it's going to be, it'd be interesting what they do with him. He's, uh, like when we get to my defensive interior rankings, those should be out in the next few days. I'll kind of talk about why Leal is just kind of this enigma in this class. All right. Khalil Shakir going to the Browns. So they lose Landry and they pick up a uh, slot guy. So I don't mind. I don't mind. Dude, Shakir, he's got some ball skills. Uh, Daniel Falele. So I guess he's your right tackle of the future because I don't know if you're starting him right away. So... Yeah. Houston Texans go Marcus Jones. They go with slot corner. Currently they got they got Desmond Keen there, but he's not a long term answer. And Marcus Jones brings some return skills. So if you don't start him early, you know he's at least gonna get some return. Um he's gonna get some returns. Well, uh, the Giants go Tyreek Wolin. This is a wonderful pick. Tyreek Wolin making it this far. It needs a minute to develop, but dude's a hell of a player. Uh, no, no Martin, uh, Emerson yet. Uh, Matthew Butler, man. Okay. This is a bit early, I think for Butler, but not too early. I mean, uh, with Marlon Davidson, 
there it's like yeah you could probably upgrade and butler honestly is probably what they what they want or what they thought they were getting in marlon davidson so philadelphia eagles they go kirby joseph so they get a safety um what did they get in the first round they didn't get safety they didn't address safety yet did they so yeah not bad i like that and he's got some he can play special teams uh, Pittsburgh Steelers, Kobe Bryant, the Black Mamba. Yeah, they need to add more help at corner. Though I think that's a little bit early for Kobe Bryant. Um, again, we'll talk about him when we get to my uh, cornerback rankings video. I'm going to do like a top 15, maybe top 20, because this cornerback class is interesting. New England Patriots, Cordero or Cordell Flout. This is the highest I've seen him go in any mock. He is legit slot only. Like, he's a guy still growing into his body. But, I mean, I don't think he, like, he, unless they think Jonathan Jones is going to play on the outside since Jackson's gone. Well, that's not true. Jones is still going to play in the slot. Because they brought in Butler, so it's going to be Butler and Mills. So, I don't know about this one. Hey, the Raiders' first pick, Luke Godek. Dude, big fan of this guy when I get to my offensive line prospects. This is a guy that you kind of hope stays healthy. I think that's his biggest knock on his game is availability. Arizona Cardinals take James Cook to pair up with James Conner, they're like, hey, you know, Benjamin's fine, but James Cook's, he's our receiving back. That's who we want. Dallas Cowboys, Bo Melton. Ooh, Bo Melton going pretty high, too. I mean, you're just adding to your slot guys at this point. Because what CeeDee Lamb mainly played in the slot, and I'm telling you, Bo Melton is, he's a slot guy in the NFL. That's just what he is. So maybe you're moving CD to play more on the outside. That's actually exactly what he just said so yeah reading's important uh buffalo bills go with nicholas petit freer so this guy's got versatility i think he played guard early on if you want him to if you don't feel good about the guys you have at guard which if you're the bills yeah with roger saffold there you probably don't feel good about your other guard spot because cody ford's still on the roster uh, or he could eventually maybe end up being your tackle of the future, too. Tennessee Titans, they're going Z Z Velas Jones. The dude's 25, man. I don't like this pick. He will be 25 when the 2022 season begins. Yeah, he's quick. He's going to offer help in the return game, but really, you're going to have him for maybe that rookie contract and... I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Cameron Thomas finally coming off the board. So not a bad pickup. I kind of I kind of like this. This is like William Golston type of uh, would probably be his type of role. Maybe plays early downs if they think Tryon is going to be uh, a detriment in the run game. It's kind of the knock on Tryon coming out of Washington. So Packers, Darren Kennard, he's available. He's a good player. Not bad, not bad, not bad value here. Uh, let's see. Um, Z oh my gosh, Zylan McCullen. That's a hell of a pickup. You could develop him. You don't have to start him early on. I, I like I like this pick. I like this is about the range I start thinking about McCullen. All right, Kansas City Chiefs, D'Angelo Malone. So they're literally going total opposite side of the spectrum in terms of what Spag likes at pass rusher. Malone can't play coverage. You're not playing this cat in coverage. Jake Ferguson had a field day at the Senior Bowl with D'Angelo Malone. He is your DPR, designated pass rush only. Bengals, they're going to go with Josh Job. This is too early. I'm not a fan of Job. Never never really was. Him and Seven, Seven Banks were kind of the guys at the beginning of the year. I was like, I really don't like these guys. And then they had bad years. 
especially Banks. He decided to stay in school, and I think he's transferring. So this is too early for Job. I'm not reaching that far on corner if I'm the Bengals and that desperate. Uh, Denver Broncos go. Hey, Jelani Woods. I like him. This is a good fit. Uh, this is just great value. Detroit Lions. Isaiah Spiller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, some people might think the value is good on this. I don't. I would take him in the fifth. That's probably the video coming out tomorrow, running back. So be on the look for that. Oh, by the way, I forgot. I'm literally making my uh, safeties video live right now. So it's becoming live here uh, for you guys right now. Just finished its upload. Forgot that it was still uploaded. So, uh, yeah, if you're wondering um, when I'm recording this, it's at the exact moment that my safety video just went live. Uh, New Orleans Saints. Uh, JT Woods, that's interesting. Yeah, Mark. they brought in Marcus May. You're kind of hoping maybe he is the guy. Uh, you lost. I mean, literally, you're both starting safeties. Maybe they want to keep... Uh, Chauncey Gardner Johnson at the um, slot. So Brian Woods is in a bad option. They also brought in Daniel Source, and you don't want that guy to play too many snaps. Isaiah Likely. Uh, listen, Likely's falling down boards. The dude didn't test out well for what you thought you were getting. Um, unfortunately, neither did. Like, yeah, no, I think he's probably firmly a fourth, fifth round pick, man. Maybe. You could probably do better. Who are the tight ends available here? I mean, honestly, the Maryland tight end's an interesting thought in moving him to, like, fullback. That's an interesting thought. Who do the Browns have at fullback? Because this guy's... Like, the Maryland tight end is, like, a legit pass weapon. Uh, Browns, our lads, depth chart. Can't think off the top of my head. Oh, they I didn't know they brought in Jakeem Grant. I mean, that doesn't change anything, but that's interesting. Uh, Johnny Stanton. Who is Johnny? Who are you, Johnny? Undrafted free agent. Played at UNLV. Yeah, no, okay, yeah, no, no. I'm 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 taking the Maryland tight end. Baltimore Ravens. Maja Sanders. Great value. This is actually I think he's 101 on my big board. So this is, this is about the right spot, but this is a this is a good get if you're the Ravens. Excuse me. Eagles, they're gonna take Donovan West. Okay. I like this. I like Donovan West a lot. So potential safety of the future, or safety corner or center of the future. There we go. Miami Dolphins, our first pick, Brandon Smith. He's not ideally. I love Brandon Smith, but I like if he feels too close to what Jerome Baker does. Uh, Brandon Smith needs to learn to be a traditional linebacker, as you saw. Like the you didn't see the same type of aggression and willingness to take on offensive linemen like he was in 2020 when he was playing an overhang safety type of role and he had no problem popping uh popping these receivers and suddenly they put on like 150 pounds and it's like oh this is a lot tougher so smith is a bit of a project if this okay hold on look at this if the Dolphins are serious about stopping the run, Smith will help. Not right off the bat. I hate to break it to you. All right. Next pick. Kansas City Chiefs. Ooh. Neil Farrell. There's just, I think, better nose tackles if you want a nose tackle. And I'm not that high on the interior class. This just feels a bit early. And I think the Rams is the final pick, right? Sean Ryan, that's a hell of a pick. No, no, we still got more picks. But Sean Ryan's a hell of a pick. That's exactly who you want to come away with if you're the Rams, man. 
That's exactly who you want to come away with. All right, the Niners take David Bell. Okay. So this is the last pick. All right, so David Bell, I get it in the Niners scheme. Like, you could literally scheme this guy touches, but he does feel like a running back. Like, based on how he tested, look at that, 4-6-5. You're not winning a lot. You're not going to be winning a lot in the NFL with that type of speed. And he's a guy you're going to have to get the ball into early, like to him early. He's got good body control. Like I, there's a lot to like about David Bell, but and I mean if he were if if you if he was going to get drafted anywhere, honestly, San Francisco's pretty sweet spot. But I don't know if I'm the Niners if I'm taking him exactly. I mean, honestly, with the whole Debo thing going down, Potentially, but this video is hella long man going over three rounds. So go ahead do that YouTube thing Support the video and as always until next time you be easy my friends later